thanks for dropping in. If you saw my last two videos, you already know that this is the Lunar Lighthouse Puzzle Box, my latest 3D printed puzzle design. Those earlier videos revealed how to solve the puzzle and how to build your own copy. This final part of the series will discuss the puzzle mechanism, as well as the process behind designing it. But of course, this will spoil the solution. So if you want to solve the puzzle for yourself, skip this video and ask a 3D printing friend to make a copy for you. Okay, let's tackle the puzzle mechanism. The top of the lighthouse is held down by this rotating clamp. The clamp has a weird shape to it that makes sure it only releases the top in one specific position. In all other cases, the clamp maintains multiple points of contact for a very strong hold. A little further down the lighthouse, you'll see that the clamp's movement is tied to a rotating moon disk, which has a few carefully placed holes running around the bottom. The moon disk works a lot like a dial in a rotary phone. I'm not sure how many people that analogy actually helped, so I'm going to demonstrate it. A metal pin enters one of those registration holes. At this point, it can either rotate 60 degrees to the left, or 60 degrees to the right. Notice how it drags the moon disk along with it. At this point, the pin disengages, returns to its original rotation, enters the next hole in the line, and repeats the process. It continues to do so until it runs out of registration holes. At this point, you've either fully locked or unlocked the puzzle. This choreographed dance is entirely hidden from the puzzle solver. That's because it takes place inside this cam piece. The cam is slightly taller than the pin. That way, the pin can be fully contained as the cam brings it from one registration hole to the next. As I already covered in this solution video, the state of the pin, whether or not it's locked in the moon disk, depends on the puzzle's orientation. If the lighthouse is upside down, the pin will grab the moon disk and drag it along with the cam. If the lighthouse is right side up, the pin retreats into the cam, and the cam can rotate independently from the moon disk. Okay, we're most of the way there. We've already covered the top clamp, as well as the moon disk and the cam. The next section of the mechanism is a part that's going to be familiar with most of those who followed my fidget designs. These toggle buttons are responsible for rotating the cam a very predictable distance every click. A full toggle from one state to another results in a 120 degree turn. A half toggle will align this little hole in the cam with a hole in the bottom layer of the lighthouse. This acts as both the pin's starting point and as a trap that takes an extra step to escape. Lastly, there's the long curved slider. The entire purpose for this piece is to make sure that the toggle buttons aren't accidentally pressed the moment the puzzle is first picked up. All right, that covers the puzzle mechanism. Once you break it down into its individual pieces, it's not really all that complicated. Yet it's beyond what I could have come up with all in one go. Designing a sequential puzzle box is a lot like solving one. You explore ideas bit by bit until things start to fall into place. For this puzzle, that design process started about a year ago, shortly after releasing the Super Toggly Fidget button. Clicking the fidget was really satisfying, so I wanted to use that in a puzzle. But how? A simple one-click latch wouldn't be very difficult, and stringing a bunch of toggles together as a combination lock would be functional but not very fun as a puzzle. Ideally, the puzzle solution would reuse the same toggle mechanism multiple times. More click for your puzzle buck. So how do you get any forward progress out of a control that just goes back and forth? Well, a ratchet will do that. A repeating motion can catch a mechanism when it's moving in one direction, and then let it slip by when it's going the other. That leads to a new problem. It's easy to make a one-way ratchet mechanism, but that's no good if the puzzle can only be solved once. There needs to be a way to lock it back up. I also wanted a solution that was more creative than click 12 times to open. Even though an extreme version of that, a thousand click lock, might be kind of a fun prank puzzle. 
using a secondary control, in this case gravity, to engage or disengage the ratcheting action, solved both of these problems at once. Instead of clicking a certain number of times to win, you need to click only when the ratchet is set to go in the desired direction, meaning that you can actually lose progress if you aren't paying attention. This continuous rotation could be harnessed a few different ways. It could slowly drive a screw up through the puzzle until a lid pops up, similar to my Barrel Cooper's puzzle box. Or I can pull in some horizontal locks, like my twist lock boxes. Instead, I copied one of my less challenging puzzle designs, the lovely puzzle box, and used a simple rotating clamp. Not only is it strong and easy to print, it takes up less space than either of those alternate solutions. We now have the entire puzzle mechanism. The design could stop right there, and it would actually be a more difficult puzzle than the design I ended up with. That's because at this point, the mechanism is entirely obscured. There's no indication whether you're making progress or even if you're losing progress. My goal though is to make fun puzzles, not necessarily the most extremely difficult ones. That's where this window comes into play. This friendly progress meter tells you if you're actually getting somewhere with its moon phase display. Near the tail end of this design process, I realized this could also be used to hide a bonus moon, a very lucky and completely unplanned addition to the puzzle. Laid out like this, the process sounds pretty linear, but that's a lie. Designing involves a lot of trial and error, and that's especially true for puzzles. Trial, error, and prototypes. Because behind every shiny project you see, there's a box of ugly rejected designs, parts that don't even fit, and prints that really should have been final. But wait, what if I just tweak this one small part? I hope you enjoyed this wrap up video. Let me know if this process is something you'd like for me to cover more often, or if there are specific parts of the design process you want to see more of. In the next video, we're back to a brand new project. So until then, happy printing and thanks for stopping by.